and good Thursday morning from the CNET studios in New York City. It's oh, the God. 359 episode 241. My name is BBG in the house today. We've got Alfred Ng and Ben Fox Rubin. What's up, guys? Hello, hello. Hello to live stream. Hello to YouTube. Hello to Periscope. We got Periscope today. We, we got also Peri- got it. juicy tips. Juicy tips. About the iPhone how, to please, how to please your iPhone. So... Uh, Jessica Dulcourt came out with a story today about how iOS 11 could provide some juicy clues about what the iPhone 8 might look like. It's mostly speculative, but it's a lot of pretty good educated guesses. So we're going to be running through a handful of those. We'll also get to uh, Julian Assange's office. It's an artist recreation of it in England. I think it's in Liverpool, right? I believe so. Yes, somewhere in Liverpool. We'll talk all about it and also to end on a very nice positive note, a new Spider-Man doll that talks to you and tells you comic book stories. So, he also, tells, he also tells jokes. He also tells jokes? Yes. I look forward to that. Yes. So, uh, send in your questions and comments. BVG will get to as many as he can at the end of the podcast. And let's make this thing happen. All right. Oh, my God. <laughs> what? Stop doing... Okay, here we go. It's Three. facial expressions. Two. Welcome to the 359. I'm Ben Fox Rubin. I'm Alfred Ng. iOS 11's new features offer some useful early clues about the highly anticipated iPhone 8. Our own Jessica Dolcourt said in a story today, For one thing, Apple's heavy focus on augmented reality in iOS 11 gives us a pretty good idea that AR will play a significant role in the new device. Mm -hmm. Do you agree? I mean, I think that with that, with, you know, the addition of AR, it definitely means that they're planning something big for their cameras. Mm -hmm. You really can't have, like, AR capabilities be that great without really having, like, the camera to back it up. Like, you take a look at that phone Lenovo put out. Right. Where it, it was like this gigantic phone and they had like a pretty good camera on it with that. Right. That's with the uh, that that uses Google Tango. It's yes. one of the earliest ones to yeah. do it. So that's another thing that Jessica mentions in her story that um, some or all of the models of the new iPhone 8 mm-hmm. may have three cameras, which sounds like a lot. But if you are going to do mean, AR and do it right, you may potentially need that many cameras on the back of it. I mean, is it worth arguing that the the iPhones already have three cameras though? Because you take a look at the Seven S, where it's technically it's not another camera, but it's dual lensed, and then they have one on the front already. So that, to me, I feel like that's already three cameras. Okay, three cameras on the back though. Mm-hmm. And do you think that on that's the too back? Many? Three yeah. cameras on the back? Yeah, because that's that way you get uh, depth perception for I mean, the actual thing. Yeah, I guess that makes a lot more sense as far as like AR goes. Um, yeah. I think the other interesting thing is essentially. You know, Siri, maybe you'll be able to start activating just by saying, like, the same way that you would be able to activate, like, Alexa. Right. With Hey Siri, mm-hmm. you can do that but the right now, but the idea would be to add more capabilities to yeah. it. Um, the thing for me is is that Siri just isn't that good to yes. begin with, so I don't really see this actually making her much better. I mean, do you think that with more people interacting with it on the HomePod, though, that it might help? Can- Assuming oh, yeah. that more people would use that. Yes, that would definitely give a- Apple more data. But at the same time, I think Siri is pretty far behind. Uh, next, uh, two artists in England made a perfect recreation of Julian Assange's 43 square foot, yes, 43, living space in the Ecuadorian embassy in London. Is this what what do you think people would want to get out of this? Like what is the purpose for doing this? I mean, you know all those live streams that they do for like WikiLeaks with Julian Assange and like a green screen and things like that? I feel like it'd be like a tourist stop where you can go and like pretend that like you're with him or something like that. I really hope there's like a wax replication of him. They also haven't done that this. yet. Right, but like I kind of think that creating such a small confined space is potentially a way to get more sympathy for him or at least like raise a little bit more awareness that this guy has been like stuck in this embassy for the past five Mm -hmm. years. I mean, I think it's interesting. I hope they do the same thing for like wherever Edward Snowden is holed up where you can kind of like get a look at like what it's like inside this this person's like their daily life. You know, I think it's really interesting As, as far as like historical purposes. I think it's like really cool. You don't think Edward Snowden isn't in an awesome Russian mansion somewhere? Um. I don't know. I don't No. <laughs> OK. Last to end the week on a very positive note. Toy maker Sphero created a voice activated storytelling Spider-Man doll. It's packed with 100 comic book stories in on audio. It's also one hundred and fifty dollars. So kind of a more expensive toy, but 
I don't know. I think it's kind of cool. I could watch the Spider-Man movie for like 15 times at that price, and I feel like that would be a much more fun experience than this toy. I also don't like smart toys, so. <laughs> I, well, I was try- I was trying to end positive, but I guess that wasn't going to happen. Anyway, if you liked what you heard, check us out on CNET for more about these stories. I'm Ben Fox Rubin. I'm Alfred Ang. Thanks for listening. That Spider-Man was cool. I don't know what you're what you're griping about. I, I hate smart toys. Whatever. You never had a Teddy Ruxpin growing up. That's I, your problem. Yes. No. He's a he's a Ute. He doesn't have. Just give Teddy me a Ruxpin. phone <laughs> and Angry Birds, or what? What are kids playing now? I don't know. I do think it's cute. However, it is kind of expensive. It's I'm not even sure cuddly. A lot of people... Like, it's like maybe if it was a Teddy Ruxpin like cuddly kind of thing, but this thing's like rock hard. Like, <laughs> who would play with this? Kind of rubbery. I would like some juicy tips Same on kids who have pleasing <laughs> your Spider-Man toy. <laughs> oh, don't go don't. there. No, I Cho- mean, This is for children, Ben. This is a family-friendly right. show. That's true. It is a family-friendly podcast. I retract my comments. And kids play with action figures and plastic dolls yeah, all the time. But exactly. And this thing does not look like an action figure. It's like trying to be cuddly and then also an act. It's, it's just weird. I don't agree with Scott's verbiage of cuddly necessarily, mm. but I still think it's pretty cool. Yeah, because give me something to read me comics. I can be that much lazier. Yeah, I agree. That's that. I like that idea. Anyway, okay, but do we have Apple questions? We don't have too many Apple questions, but actually, this is a great opportunity to plug um, the ongoing series we have on CNET. Uh, James H is asking if there are any possible new adaptable softwares for people with disabilities, such as himself. And we actually have an ongoing series on CNET right now. Mm-hmm. It is called Tech what Enabled. Is it called? Tech Enabled. Yeah, you had some great stories for Tech Enabled. Yes, please um, plug. I wrote one story for Tech Enabled about um, a smartphone that quadriplegics can use just by using like head movement. So it uses like facial recognition and then it registers your face as the mouse. So like you move your head around and it uses that to click on things on your smartphone instead. So you don't really need to touch it or anything like that. A lot of people have been using this to kind of like control their smart homes and things like that or just, just, you know, chat with people. I actually used it to chat with one of its co-founders who is a quadriplegic um over in israel and we talked on skype using just that um which is really cool was that also the same story where you mention a guy that uh, is like a really badass street fighter player that's, and that's my other his, that's my other that's your other one story. this so, guy plays street fighter with his face we did a, a whole really thing cool on gaming story, yeah really neat yeah. yeah so in this one it was basically about um this there, there's these two companies um one called able gamers and the other one's called special effect that they help create like special controllers specifically for uh disabled gamers um and people would go to them for like consultation sessions and they'd figure out like what your needs are like based off of like what your abilities are and like what kind of control they need to make for you so they had one where it's like completely mouth controlled Mm -hmm. where like you would play with your tongue only but and then they had ones where it's like foot switches so if you couldn't like use your hands to control in like a a first person shooter kind of thing but you could use like fingers to like like shoot right they had like a foot pedal thing or like a board thing where like you could swivel around that to like move around in the game and then like just shoot like pressing like one button only. I think that's it's really cool. Sweet. That yeah. is really neat. That's yeah. that's pretty awesome to you know mm-hmm. people that want to game help them game as much as they but can. But I think James's question was more about software. Both of my like questions were more about hardware itself, except for the smartphone example. But I know that Apple actually does a lot when it comes to like being more accommodating for um, you know people that want to you use like their technology and things like that um most of a lot of it's like for blind users where they have like screen readers really that are really helpful um i don't think they revealed that much about that for like at like wwdc though where it's like new per se or for like the iphone 8 arguably like more siri functions especially if you're going to utilize the home pod yeah those could help people with you know a variety of disabilities uh so that is obviously helpful i just think that like even with Alexa and Google Assistant, which are, you know, far and away a better products than Siri, they're still kind of frustrating to deal with. Mm-hmm. So somebody with a disability that's actually going to try to rely on this stuff for their smart home, I, I don't really think that we're quite there yet, but it might make certain things much easier for Certainly. somebody to do. Mm-hmm. I think so. Yeah. And this is obviously ongoing. There will be lots, lots more coverage in this series. In fact, I don't know how much we can really 
divulge, but I know Roger's out on working on another story right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How much can we spill on what well, I'm working on? Well, that's for Road Trip. That's for that's Road Trip. That's for Road Trip. Yeah. Yeah. My mistake. Yeah. yeah. You'll just have to wait and see. Mm-hmm. We're okay. not going to talk about it at all. All right, Hi guys. That's what I figured we, we might be hush-hush on this for mm-hmm. the time being. So it's pretty cool. One additional feature that I thought was interesting that Jessica mentioned in her story was the idea of integrating with HomePod. For instance, my wife constantly loses her phone around the house. We're not going to do this because I'm not buying the HomePod. It's $350, and we already have like two Echoes in my oh, house. poor Ben. Can't afford $350. All right, whatever. Let me get to the Let point. Let me start my GoFundMe for so, you. <laughs> that would be really nice. So let's say you've got the HomePod. You don't know where you put your phone. You can ask Siri to find your phone, which I know is like such a first world problem. But at the same time, it's like instead of getting on your computer, do find my iPhone, something like that. Uh, I think that that could be a pretty useful function uh, for something that yeah, I'm surprised, the Echo doesn't do. I'm surprised yeah. Amazon hasn't already done that with the Echo. Like, find my Amazon phone. Right. <laughs> exactly. Why would they? Why because wouldn't they do that? Because there are no Amazon phones, I think. Yeah, definitely. Uh, anybody in the chat, go ahead and chime in with some of your predictions or thoughts about uh, what we're going to see out of the iPhone 8. It's uh, it's kind of quiet today, but that's all right. Then yeah, getting close to the end of the week. Yeah, I um, would say so. Everybody's getting a little sleepy. I, I, We're getting into the summer. I disagree with one of the th- predictions that she made based off of what iOS 11 has to offer, and that is the iPhone like standalone like VR headset kind of thing, similar to like what Daydream is with like Google. Mm-hmm. I really don't think Apple's going to come out with something like that on their own. Why not? I think they're going to come up with like VR stuff for it. I don't think they're going to come out with their own headset. Can you like? Can you imagine like a like a cardboard kind of like VR headset from like Apple? Maybe I, I don't. Mean, know. I don't see it. They so Tim Cook keeps coming out and saying like, I love the possibility of VR. I love the possibility of AR. Obviously, tipped his hand quite a bit with uh, WWDC talking about AR kit and all the different uh, focuses on AR. I don't see it as so unlikely that they wouldn't try to like push into VR. And if they did, especially with a phone. You probably need some sort of headset mm-hmm. that it would accommodate. So whether that's going to be from a third party or whether that's going to be from Apple itself, and it's going to cost like five hundred or a thousand dollars, I still yeah, think I mean, that there's a chance that that. I mean, would I think there will be VR on it because they were showing that off at WWDC. I just don't think like you, you were saying like either from like some kind of third party. I think that's right. that's the route that it might go, mm-hmm. or like some other division from Apple, like maybe like from like Beats. From Dr. Dre or something like that. Never, never. They will. I from from VR Dre. (laughs) I really don't think that they're going to come out with like a new Beats labeled product. Like they had a chance to do that with the HomePod and they didn't. I mean, they did that. Didn't they do that with like the Lightning? Not Lightning. Sorry, the AirPods. What was that? Like like new? They came out like when they announced the AirPods and they're like, "Well, we've got so much courage." It was like, "Check out this new lineup of like wireless headphones that we also have." I think you're right. Yeah. Yeah. But like it was really like a quick throwaway and it wasn't like AirPods brought to you by Beats. It wasn't HomePods brought to you or HomePod brought to you by Beats, Mm -hmm. which I might have expected as like a quick addition just to like give them like a nod. Like, hey, we we bought this like, you know, stereo or or like this audio company. But it it seems pretty clear to me that they're going to sunset that brand at some point. Yeah. You think they're going to sunset Beats? I hope so. I mean, like, or, I mean, they'll, I just, or they'll just keep it, like, in that you very realize how small much, yeah, area. Yeah, but, like, it makes, like, a ton of money for them. Mm, yeah, mm. I guess. Like, but people sucks. Know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, it's at a really high price, and a lot of people buy it. So, it, either really, way, like, if it's going to make you a ton of money, and you don't spend that much money on it to make it, like... I really expected I really, them to promote the name Beats a lot yeah, more. Yeah, that's and my point. Didn't. I think like Beats are like dumb popular, and like I think I don't think they're gonna sunset it anytime soon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think they're gonna sunset it anytime soon. But they're really not showing it off as much as they could be, uh, which is too bad because they're coming out with audio products. Beats, so. Beats car. You know, what? I think Beats is gonna take over Apple. Actually, right? Yeah, <laughs> that was the, the worst out. prediction of 2017 <laughs> <laughs> award goes to. Cool. All right, so we got a few wish lists from Chad TV for... What's up, Chad TV? For the iPhone. He, uh, he says, I hope it has a more open OS. He says, I'd really like to see that iOS... Um, see, the iOS users can download and use files like OS X and not have to sync to iTunes, which I believe we're seeing coming, right? Open file 
management yes, with, on the yeah, iPhone. Um, yes, with the the files like Explorer kind of thing or whatever. Yeah, um, yeah, but like it's a step I, it's, in the right direction, but it's probably not as robust as we might hope for. Yeah, as Chad opposed TV to how it is, works on an Android. Yeah, he's I- exactly right. Chad yeah. TV's question, you know, definitely like implies the fact that like if you do want like more openness, then you're probably going to want to go with Android. Yeah, I mean, I think the ish, like the reason like part of the reason why Apple does this though with like the lack of openness outside of money is uh, essentially like they're very like gung ho about like security aspects of it. And mm-hmm. that's why like there's also a lot of like alarms for like security when it comes to Android where like people sideload like these apps that end up like locking up their phones and things like that. So Apple's kind of like, let's take that step out of it and just, you know, make sure everything's locked down to the way it is. That's like the side reason. The main reason is like probably for money. But uh, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> the main reason is usually for money. Yeah. No kidding. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chad TV also uh, asks for allowing for wireless transfer over Bluetooth and AirDrop and NFC. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. I mean, like, it would be nice if they opened up the NFC chip to more functions. Like, I right now. I wouldn't hold your breath. No, I wouldn't hold your breath either. It's something that's mentioned in Jessica's story, but it's like more as like a maybe sort of probably not going to happen thing that that was the bucket that she put it under. The other thing that we haven't mentioned was this whole point about like they're going to get rid of the home button. Uh, that seems like a very high likelihood that we've been talking about for like a couple of years now that like this is the direction that Apple is going in. The question is, is like, are they going to be able to include the fingerprint sensor on the front of the phone? Because we saw that with uh, Samsung's Galaxy S8, they weren't quite there yet. They had to include the fingerprint sensor on the back of the phone. You got to reach Apple up gets super there. far. You got to dig deep, reach in and put your finger on it. Right. Are like all the way in the about- back. How to please? No, 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 no. no. This is the this Galaxy Lord. S8. <laughs> Good Lord. All right. Uh, Thank God it's Thursday. <laughs> we got. We have a good one to elaborate on. Uh, Scott Scott Maya asks, uh, do we think the AR kit will be as big as Apple is making out to be? Mm, I don't really I, well, think here, so. They're, That's they're, a great question. They're accurate in their claim that this is going to be the biggest AR platform ever because... It's, they 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 have the most phones like out there like right. well not more than like Android does but it's like essentially they have so many phones and it's gonna be on all of them that technically it's true that it's gonna be the largest AR platform like ever for them yeah no it's because they they don't have nearly as much fragmentation either but the, there are obviously yeah. way more Android phones but Android phones run on any number any flavor and that's the of thing Android. like I I'd like to see the comparison of how many Android phones are out there that can actually run like. Project Tango or like their AR capabilities. So totally. They're technically correct about that. As far as like usage goes though, I think they're completely wrong on it. Where like their AR features are, are still like kind of like the fun, cool the ones where it's like, hey, look, there's a fidget spinner on mm. this table. Whereas like with Google's like AR capabilities, it's like you're gonna be able to know how much a beer costs at this place and you're gonna be able to like get your Wi Fi password like using the AR on this. So biggest, sure. Most useful, probably not. Like I mean, I think you're very and most much on used, point. Probably. I, I was probably going to make like a couple of those points and you got to them. So well done. That's I, I agree. I'll save some of my points. No, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's probably about a good place to bring us home for the week. Uh, wrap it up. Yeah. All, All right. right. I'll I'll do my best. <laughs> Okay, the 359 podcast is available on iTunes, TuneIn, Stitcher, SoundCloud, FeedBurner, Google Play Music, and? Uh, and of course, CNET.com. Also, be sure to get something cool for Father's Day. Oh, um, cool. Yeah. I'm a father. Yeah, happy Father's Day, Ben. Oh, thanks, man. Happy Father's Day. That's so nice of you guys. Anyway, check us out, and we'll see you next week. We'll see you next yeah, week. That's that, That'll call the week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll are, do it. We are burnt out for some reason. Please come back. <laughs> All right. Later. Take care, everybody. Excelsior. Excelsior.